Hey guys, it's May May, and I hear from you guys all the time about how to score without a scoreboard. Some of you guys don't have a scoreboard. You haven't made that investment. And today I'm going to show you some tips and tricks for what I do and what I've done in the past when I didn't have scoreboards myself. Now, these are the scoreboards I'm using right now. This is the We Are scoreboard. I love it because it's marked every quarter of an inch. And this is the mini version. I'm not as in love with the mini as much as I love the big one, but I do pick this one up a lot. So if you're looking for a good scoreboard, I think I have a video I can link below to show you how this one works. But today, Today, we're not using one, so we're going to move on. Now, if you're not familiar with what a scoreboard is or does at all, it just makes folding easier. You, you probably go, well, May May, I can just fold my page over and just crease it with my hands. And you absolutely can do that. But sometimes paper will crack and crease when we do that. And you don't want those cracks and crevices. So today, I'm going to show you how to get around it. So let's make a box today using this six by six inch piece of paper and our ruler and another way of scoring. Okay, so here we go. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the marks where my score lines need to be. And for this particular box, it needs to be at two and at four inches all the way around. Okay, so I'm just gonna run this around and make my marks. Now here's the thing, if you're making a different project that would call for a scoreboard, instead of scoring on the measurements it tells you, you're gonna mark the measurements it tells you at first. So just go around and make your marks, two and four. I'm doing that on all sides. Now this is just a sample to show you how I would get around um, scoring paper if I didn't have my scoring tools. All right, so two and four again. Now I'm gonna show you, I have to make four score lines. I'm gonna show you different ways of doing it with these marks we've made. So first, all I have is a ruler and I don't have anything to score with except this ruler, okay? So I'm gonna take this ruler and I'm gonna lay it on my paper. I'm gonna line it up from one mark to the other. So this is the marks that I made on the edge of the page and this is where I need my score line to be. Now this is not technically scoring, but it does a good job, okay? If you line the edge of your ruler up, with those marks, and I'm actually gonna use the beveled edge because it's a little bit flatter. You line those marks up, just like this, on both ends, and then you pick up this edge of your paper or cardstock, and you kind of pull the paper to the ruler like this. See, I'm putting some pressure because my hand's slipping, but pull it to the ruler like this, and then just press at the bottom. You'll get a nice, clean fold. The reason for that is because you're pulling all the fibers at the same time, and we're not kind of forcing any um, against each other, and that gives you a nice, clean fold, even though you didn't score it. So that's one way. Then once you have it like this, take your ruler, you're just using a ruler, and then crease that down. No need for a bone fold or anything. And look how nice this is. I'm gonna zoom in and let you see that. So you see how clean that fold is? It's nice and clean. There's no wrinkles or cracks or anything. See that? And that's just using your ruler and nothing else. Now for the second idea of scoring, let me show you. Take your same ruler. You're going to line it up from point to point just like this. And this time, this is what I used to use all the time. This is a pin top from one of those pins. What are these called? These are by Big. This one's called Crystal and it's just the pin top itself and nothing else. And what I used to do back in the day is I would make my marks and line this up and using that, the part that hangs down just for no reason, it's the part that holds the pin to your shirt. I would rub it against my ruler and put pressure on my paper just like this. Now there's a misconception about scoring that it needs to be super, super deep to work. That's not really the case. It just needs to be a good guideline to start the fibers of the page to fold. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to fold it over. And because I put those that crease there, I'm going to, going to get a nice, neat fold. Now it's not as nice as if we do it a little deeper. We'll look at that in a second. But for now, I'm just going to crease this down. And I'm going to show you this fold and how well it looks. Look at that one. Looks really good, doesn't it? It's not as crisp even as the other side, I don't think. But it still gives me a nice fold without having to have a fancy tool or anything like that. All right, next way. Now, my next way of scoring is one that anytime I talk about scoring without scoring tools, this one always gets mentioned, and it is a butter knife. Now this is just happens to be the butter knife that we have here at the shop. And it's a pretty dull tip, you know, you're not gonna get cut. I could on this side because it's serrated, so you wanna stay away from that, but over here, you're not really gonna get cut. Now it doesn't have to be a butter knife. Anything that's dull and comes to some sort of point will work. You can imagine what we're gonna do. We're gonna line up our ruler, 
just like we've been doing. And we're going to take that butter knife and just run it down. The one thing you want to do with a butter knife is you want to be careful not to press too hard. If you press too hard, it can go through your paper or your cardstock, depending on what kind or what poundage you're using. Now, I can actually see this mark. Um, you probably can too. Let me see if I can get it where you can see it. I'm pretty sure you can see that mark there. This knife actually left kind of, there it is, an indention. Can you see that? That's a good way to get a deeper score is by using a butter knife. Now, it's not the only way to get a deeper score. We'll look at one more thing in a second, but this works pretty good. And watch how this one's going to fold. I can go right to it. And it's really simple because of the way I did that. Now, you could use your butter knife as a bone folder, but I find that's a little too rough on your paper or your cardstock. So I just go back to the ruler. That's the way to do it. Now, this hack is great for traveling because so far this ruler has been really the only thing you'd have to take with you. But these are good ideas if you're traveling too. Okay, so we've scored three different ways. Let's do one more. So this is a mouse pad from my husband's computer. Can you tell? It's all about deer hunting. I don't do that, but he does. So here we go. So here is a mouse pad and I'm going to place my ruler on those lines just like we did before. And this is how I'm going to get a deeper score without cutting through the page. So this is a gel pen that I have and I'm going to open this tip and I'm going to remove the ink. This is the writing portion. I'm not going to use that. I'm going to just put this right back on top. Oh, the squeak though. Put that right back on top. Do you see the point I get here? It's not a perfect point, but it's going to be enough for this. Okay. So what I'm going to do is with my marks lined up, I'm going to take that gel pen without the ink in it, and I'm going to run it right down beside the ruler. Another thing you can do is you can lay it flat against the ruler and you can get a pretty good score that way. Now that'll be a little deeper because I did it on the mouse pad and so you'll it'll easily score. See how easy that was? Because I did it on the mouse pad. Now when you're creasing it, just move your mouse pad out of the way so you can get a good crease and again just use your ruler, crease that down and you're good to go. So that's four different ways of scoring and look we got some really good score lines. Now let's turn this into a little box. It won't have a lid, but it'll be a box. So I'm going to use some scissors that are not fancy either. <laughs> Just use some of these guys right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut the score line to where they intersect on four sides. So once right here, once right here, just to where they intersect, once right here, And then here, it's been a long time since I've used this kind of scissor. Isn't that crazy? I get so used to my Tim Holtz shears where they have the, like the same hole here. I'll show you what I mean. I get so used to these guys, the way they are, that putting these in my hands feel different. But I know most of us use those, so they do feel different. Okay, now then to make this box, you'll just glue this guy together. Let me find some tape. So I'm just going to use some sticky tape. And this is a really good... Um, tool to have if you don't have a lot of fancy tools. The sticky tape doesn't need anything fancy for it to work. So I'm going to flip this guy over and in each corner here, I'm going to put a little sticky tape. And another thing, look at this, just use your ruler to help you tear it. So one there, one here, one here. Whoops. And then one here. So you guys know I usually use my pokey tool to remove the backer here, but if you don't have that, I'm gonna use this little pin nib and just kind of work up the edge of it and peel that away. There's always a way to do something in your craft room, even if you don't have the money to buy every little fancy tool. And you probably think, well, maybe you have a store, so you're telling people how to do things without a tool. The thing is this, some things that we have in the store you need, and then some things you can get around. So spend your money wisely. Spend it where you need to spend it on what you need to spend it on. And if tools are not your thing, there are some ways to get around it. You could probably even make your own pokey tools and things like that. I actually had a subscriber make me one. This is a little harder, I will admit, but I got it done. Okay, so now we just close this little guy up from one inch to the other. This video wasn't about making the box, it was about scoring. So you're probably through watching that at this point, but I'll show you how this works. We made a little box. Just by sticking all those pieces together. Oops, I should have put that one in first, there we go. Just like that. So a little box just made like that and doing it with our, our scoring hacks. So a pen top, pen without an ink, butter knife, 
your ruler, just your ruler. Honestly, this is a pretty good one. If you make that, your if you make your little marks on either end and just use it to help you fold up, it's great. So lots of ways to do it. Now in the comments below, I want you to put what you would use as your scoring tool and your bone folder if it wasn't a ruler and it wasn't one of these guys. There are thousands of things. <laughs> so it's a good thing to put it in the comments and then you guys head down and look. So if you're needing some ideas, you can find it in the comments below. Hey, thanks so much for watching. I hope this helps. And I want to do a series of this in 2019 of kind of tools that you can kind of make of your own or even, even just some hacks that I do when I craft. Um, and if you guys like that idea, let me know that in the comment below. If you'd like to see some hack videos and things like that, I think it's always fun to see those kind of things. So I enjoy you guys being here. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you again next time. Bye-bye.